Hey, this is attorney Elizabeth Potts Weinstein. Today we're going to be talking about the four top mistakes that people make when submitting a specimen to the United States Patent and Trademark Office for their trademark. So what is a specimen? What am I talking about? When you apply for a trademark with the United States Patent and Trademark Office, you have to give them evidence that you're actually using this trademark. It's only fair that you should get a trademark if you actually use that trademark to sell products or services. So you have to produce a specimen. You either produce a specimen at the time of the application, if you're already selling stuff, or you can file an intent to use application and then give them the specimen later before the trademark issues, before it become a registered trademark. Either way, you have to submit it sooner or later. So what are the big mistakes that people make? Number one, they don't submit the right kind of specimen, the right kind of evidence. So how does this work? When you file a trademark application, you have to claim what category of product or service that it's in. This is the class of your trademark. Are you selling t-shirts? Are you selling life coaching? You know, what are you selling? If you're selling a service, which could be education, it could be life coaching, it could be consulting, then you produce usually a screenshot of your sales page uh, or something like that, where you're showing evidence of how you are offering your services for sale. And there is some call to action on that page where someone could someone could either buy your service or they can call you to talk about it or email you or you know sign up in a form, something like that. If you're selling a product, it's totally different. So let's say you're selling clothing, you're selling t-shirts. You need to take an actual photo of that t-shirt with your trademark, with your logo, whatever it is, on the tag, on a label or it could be a display. So let's say you sell some kind of goods that are in some kind of display and at the store, and then your trademark's actually on the display itself. That's typically what you're doing, but it needs to be a photograph. It cannot be a mock-up of your product. Like a lot of times people will make a digital mock-up of their product because they haven't actually produced it yet. That isn't gonna work. It has to be a photo of your product. Also, it can't just be a screenshot of your sales page on the website. It actually has to be a photo of the product itself with the tag or label or whatever it is. Number two big mistake is that they're not taking that screenshot or photo of that label or, or trademark that's the same one that they filed. You may think, well, how could I make that mistake? That's my trademark. Here's how it tends to go down is that someone has a trademark that they put an extra word or something at the beginning or end. So let me give you an example. Let's say I was gonna file a trademark for small business law firm. That's a terrible trademark, we'd never get through, but let's just say I was. And I file a trademark, small business law firm. But on my website, it says the small business law firm. Or maybe on my website, it says your small business law firm. The trademark office might think that's different. It doesn't really sound different <laughs> to you or I. It seems like the same thing, but the trademark office might not think that way. You want it to match up exactly. Also spacing or hyphens. Let's say I have small business law firm and I send that in as the trademark, but on my website, everywhere on my website, I don't put any spaces in between the words. I maybe just do capital S small, capital B business, you know, like I, kept, I capitalize each word and squish everything together. That's different than what you filed. Well, same thing with like dashes and, and other, um, so you spell it slightly different. If you conjugate the verb different, whatever it is, it is not the same. It needs to match exactly. The third mistake, which typically applies to people who are selling services, is that the screenshot they take of that you know sales page or whatever doesn't describe the services enough so the trademark office can tell if it's in the right category, the right class. So for example, maybe you're doing consulting and you're doing a specific kind of consulting, you use this business consulting. But on your page that you screen cap, send them, it says consulting, but it doesn't say what kind. You could be doing legal consulting, business consulting, you could be doing high tech consulting. Those could be in different categories depending on exactly what you're doing. So you have to have enough description, it doesn't have to be a lot, it could be just bullet points, but enough description of what you're doing such that the trademark office knows if it's in the right category. The fourth mistake, which I already mentioned a little bit, is that if you are selling a product, it needs to be an actual photo of the goods. 
So people will do digital mock-ups. They'll do a screenshot of their website where the, there's a photo on there. None of that is going to work. It's got to be an actual photo of the goods with the tag or label or whatever it is. Now, the good part about all these problems is that a lot of times they can be fixed. So for example, maybe you took a screenshot of one page on your website where there wasn't enough description. Well, you have another page where there is a description. You just didn't take a screenshot of the right page. That's easy to fix. If you did send in the digital mock-up of your product, but the product already existed and you had them, you just didn't take a photo, you can take the photo and send it in. Where people run into problems is if that's the only thing they have. They don't have another use at that time. So let's say you, when you filed the application originally, you thought you were using e-commerce and you filed the specimen and then they object to it. One of the things they'll say is, well, if you don't have a specimen that was at use at that time, then you can amend it to be an intent to use application, which is a 1B application, and then refile with a specimen later of when you, and when you started selling with that specimen. So most of the time, this stuff can be fixed. You might lose the date of when you made your first sale if you have to change what the specimen is. You don't always have to as long as that specimen existed at that time. But if it didn't exist that time, you have to make a new specimen, you might lose that date if it was way before when your trademark was filed. So it's something that you wanna look at when you're filing your trademark application originally to make sure you get the specimen right so you don't have to fix it later. Again, this is attorney Elizabeth Potts Weinstein. If you have any questions about your trademark specimen, feel free to ask them below in the comments and I'll try to point you in the right direction. Thumbs up if you found this video helpful. Subscribe if you'd like more videos like this and join if you'd like to support the channel so I can make more videos like this. I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.